Hi everybody, this is Mr. Wiley um, speaking. Uh, this is your uh, geography lesson for the week starting the 23rd of March. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little introduction to the work that I'm going to be asking you to do and then you will see in the main classwork section of the, the Google Classroom the instructions, some web links and a link to a video that I'd like you to watch to help you complete these tasks. In future weeks, if you just uh, log on, you'll find additional lessons and materials to complete tasks. Uh, what I'll also do is occasionally uh, put a Google Doc up onto the Google Classroom, um, which will require you to maybe do some work in the Google Doc. And that is something that you'll get marked and feedback from Mr. Anderson and myself. OK, so today's lesson is just a quick review um, of the two major themes that you've been doing in population so far. The first one links to the map that we're looking at here. And you will have been taught already about the distribution of people across the planet. And you'll have identified that there are certain areas like Europe, coastal regions of India and on the coast of China that are very, very crowded. You'll have also learned that there are areas of the world where there are very few people like the northern parts of Canada and Russia uh, and the northern part of Africa, as well as the central region of Australia. Next thing you'll have done is uh, been introduced to these words, sparsely and densely populated. And you'll have been taught how that we measure population density by the number of people living in a kilometer squared. Final thing you'll have done here is you'll have been given a whole bunch of reasons why some areas are more crowded than others. And you should be able to now, if you look back in your jota, uh, explain why some regions of the world have more people um, these are, and some people have less. And these can be loosely called physical factors to do with the weather, to do with the shape of the land, to do with natural resources and soils, or to do with human factors, and that's uh, people. Uh, and here are human factors and population patterns help us understand that and if you're not sure on any of this just pause rewind this video a little bit and just have a quick little read through the web site uh, two web pages that I've been just reviewing second big theme that you have been asked to think about is why the world's population is changing so the world's population is growing but the growth rate is gradually slowing however that growth rate is still above the zero, which means the overall world's population is increasing. And we can see from these purple bars that the world's population in developing countries, these are poorer countries, uh, is increasing very rapidly. And that at the moment, as of about 2020, uh, we find almost uh, 7 billion people living in the developing world. And you'll see that this pattern is fairly steady going up. When we look at the part of the world that the UK is and what we might call the developing world or a developing country, wealthier nations, you can see that from 1950 up to 2020, there's been relatively little growth in the number of people living here. If I look over here, that it's peaked at just over a billion. And actually, we can see that in the future, the bars are getting coming down and that the population in the rich world is expected to shrink. However, when we add this bar to the top of this bar, by 2050, we will be above 10 billion. That does present a number of problems. So the final thing that you were doing and first part of today's lesson is you've been, uh, certainly if you've been covered this with me uh, in my classes, Mr. Anderson has just started this, looking at this. Um, we would have talked about birth rates and death rates and you will now have some idea and you'll today you'll be asked to take some notes on why birth rates are very low and death rates are very low in the United Kingdom. Just to remind you, a birth rate is the number of babies born for every thousand people in a year in a country. And a death rate is the number of people who die for every thousand in a population in a given year. Second thing is that you're going to be asked to do is a task on why population in terms of birth rates are very high or much higher in countries like India. And there are some reasons and you'll be asked to write about them and also why are death rates quite high in countries like India. Okay, so that's going to be the first part of the work. The second part of the work is just an introduction to some work we're going to do next week 
um, and you're going to be asked to watch this video and you'll find a video link in the Google Classwork. And in this video, uh, they talk about a range of things to do with the rapidly rising population in the world, why we need to try to think about controlling it or, or certainly slowing down the number of people on the planet. So I'd like you to watch this. Um, and then there's a little task about you giving some reasons why we need to think about controlling world population growth. And next week, um, we're going to have a little look at what China's done and how that affected China's population. OK, so that's uh, your work for this week. Hopefully you've uh, listened to some of the key points. You can rewind anything I've said if you want some guidance. Otherwise, what I would suggest you do is now have a look at the Google Classroom in the Classwork section and complete all of the tasks in turn. And you have till next Friday. Good luck with this new way of learning and I will post a new set of activities next week uh, to keep you going through.